Red Hot Comic Book Movie News. Paper News of the Earth. Defenders. The Weekly Planet. The Weekly Planet. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of The Weekly Planet, where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. My name is James, also known as Mr. Sunday. With me, as always, is my cousin, Nick Mason. Great to be here. Isn't it, just? James, we're having a bit of fun off air. Sure. I, I Which feel- we don't. Like doing. We don't like doing. We'd rather not do it, honestly. Mm. But uh, you've you've uh, you've you've hit a winner, James. <laughs> yeah. And, and you've named the backup recorder Recordo Montalban, <laughs> which I think that's not anything. No, it's not even a <laughs> reference anybody gets anymore. <laughs> he's the guy from Fantasy Island, and he's Khan. Oh yeah, he's Khan. His original Khan. Yeah. His original Star Trek. His original recipe Khan. <laughs> that's right. Uh, so yeah, big week this week, Mason. Because of course we're going because of course you named the backup recorder, <laughs> recorder Montalban. That is a big deal. Yes, big week. Everyone's That's it. talking about wrap it. it up, folks. That's what we did. <laughs> we are going to be talking about three-hour Hunger Game prequel, but before we get to that, we've got a bunch of trailers we've got to look at. Are you choked up because you're so emotional. I'm so emoional, Mason. I about so Recordo Montalban. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> It's good to change lives, you know. Yeah, often we to... often I feel like this doesn't make a difference. Yeah, but I think I think this will give people the the inspiration. Mm-hmm. I think to name things around their house. Absolutely, you know? yeah. Not not as good as that. No, obviously, I mean, obviously not. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, you can name your name your table at Joe or whatever. Yeah, whatever, yeah, whatever, <laughs> just yeah. whatever, just whatever. Okay, so we got trailers for What If season two, uh, Garfield. Um, that other one, anyone but you. Oh, but yeah. that, look, I don't really want to talk about that. We're going to talk about Madam Web. Right? Oh, yeah, of course we are. Yeah, the, we're not going to bury the lead here. No, no. Everybody wants us to talk about the, the the trailer for the latest entry in the Spum. That's right. The Sony Pictures Universe of Marvel movies. My goodness, um, a movie that I thought was made up. Yeah. Quite frankly, for tax purposes, but it turns out to be real. Big week for Sydney Sweeney in movies. Absolutely, in, yeah. In movie trailers, certainly, because she's in she's in this, yep. and she's in anyone but you. Exactly. But who cares about that one? Doesn't matter. We'll be fine. That the, movie will be fine. We'll be fine. We'll be fine. It's set in Australia, whatever, I think. Um, we're also going to talk about Kang Dynasty, the next Avengers movie, being retooled and moving mm. away from Kang and what's going on there because it's lost a director and a writer apparently this week. And there's a whole lot of Marvel casting as well, including Reed Richards and some other names. Maybe. 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 Going up for. Uh, Various characters, including Galactus. Mm. Apparently, uh, the DC something Superman has an, as a villain. There's the lead villain yeah. has been cast. We'll talk mm. about that in the next Superman movie. There's been a turnaround on Coyote, Coyote versus Acme movie. That's right. The movie that was cancelled for tax purposes mm. and now might be brought back due to for public relations purposes. Yeah, exactly. And, well, and and people not wanting to work with the Warner Brothers yes. purposes. Exactly. And then we're going to talk a little bit about the Marvels and its second week box office performance. And let me tell you, Mason, it's is quite dire. Oh, boy, is it ever, yeah. yes. And then we'll talk about three-hour Hunger Games prequel. All right, Mason, uh, <laughs> do you want to talk about the What If trailer for the yeah. next series of What If? What, what, go on. I thought it looked like a lot of fun. Sure. Let's do it. What okay. are, who's in it? There's a Christmas episode. There is a Christmas episode, which seems to be somewhat uh, – that. that's the funny one. That's kind of – Die Hard, Die Hard inspired. Happy, Hogan. It's Happy Hogan and Darcy from uh, the Thor movies is, yep. is in that one. Uh, it looks like this season, again, like the previous one, it's going to have some unconnected what-ifs, but then they're all maybe going to dovetail into one another yep, absolutely. towards the end. Uh, and this one, was the, remember we got that list of what-if episode titles a while back? Yeah. Are they, are they, are they accurate? Them, I don't know if the titles necessarily were, but it seemed like the premises the were premises. So we've accurate. got one here. Uh, the, I, th- I think maybe the, the biggest one or the one that's most interesting to me is the... Uh, oh, Trailers when, Ahoy. Oh, tra- huh. yep. um, <laughs> when, uh, it, you know, in the, in the Guardians movies, Peter Quill was kidnapped from Earth as a child to be taken to his father, who was Ego, yep. a living planet. Uh, but instead, the Ravagers take him on as a Ravager. But there seems to be a what mm-hmm. if here where he has been t- he's taken directly to Ego yep. and then they decide to go back to Earth and, you know, wreck it and stuff. Wreck it and stuff. Yeah, uh, and so... Uh, Peter Quill goes back to Earth as a as a teenager, but he's got the ego powers mm. and he's going to cause a ruckus. Absolutely. Uh, so like a 1990s... Yeah-ish, uh, yeah, that seems uh, about early Avengers 90s. team has to form up, which includes uh, T'Chaka, the Black Panther. Yep, Thor. Uh, Annette Benning's character from Captain Marvel. Okay, yep. Who's a Kree. Yep. Uh, others. Original Ant-Man. Original Ant-Man. Yeah. Um, Michael Douglay. Michael, M- Mr. Michael Douglay. Yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, Hayley Atwell's Peggy Carter as oh, the head right. of S.H.I.E.L.D. And maybe some other people. Yeah, I don't hate that concept, that's, actually. Looks like fun, yeah. yeah. Sure. All right. I was just too excited about the Madam Web thing. <laughs> that's true. But you're yeah. right. There are some good things on display yeah. here. And they're going to bring these out. I think it's like December 22nd, and they're going to do one a day for nine days. Yeah. Which is a very interesting way like to the do it. The nine things. days of Christmas. The exactly. traditional nine days of Christmas. Traditional nine days. 
So yeah, they should do twelve, I think, just to tie into Christmas, and three of them can just be like, "What if this happened?" No, it was basically the yeah, same. Yeah, but it, the same. it didn't. Don't worry about it. Yeah, oh, it was the same. <laughs> it's basically the same. Here's a clip of that movie. Oh, what if it did, but it didn't? <laughs> yeah, just a guy shooting it down. Yeah, okay. <laughs> oh, well, it didn't. I do it. Yeah. yeah. Um, I just want to quickly talk about the Garfield trailer because just the design wise, like. They've pushed everybody's eyes together, so it's one big goopy eye. Now, somebody pointed this I out. I hate it. Look Some, at it. Somebody pointed this out. You yeah, know, I hate it also. Yeah. Someone pointed out on Twitter, and it, it's staggering that I never picked up on this. Maybe it's not because I'm dumb. Let's find but, out. But um, that all these animated movies now have a pre, like a like a prologue where the main character is a little version. Yeah, okay. So you can sell the merch of the little cute version. Yeah, okay, yeah. So, you know. Is it cuter than this version, the Bill Murray version? No, it's very cute. He's got the same texture as the lasagna. <laughs> yep, because he's made he's ate so much lasagna he turned like into a lasagna. Mason, don't don't you? Didn't you learn anything from your parents when they said don't eat so much lasagna you'll turn into a lasagna? I didn't learn anything from my parents. Mm. They made sure of that, Mason. That's right. How do you feel about Chris Pratt's the Garfield? It's just Chris Pratt's voice, isn't it? But he's Garfield this oh, time. Oh, that's pretty good. That's the twist. <laughs> that's quite the twist. <laughs> yes. And he's got a good agent. He clearly. certainly does, yeah. I mean, it's, you know, Chris, it's, he knows what he's doing. It's like, Garfield, it's fine. It's Whatever. Garfield, it's fine, cares. but it's, it's, it's not who like. Who cares? Yeah, he doesn't have like a completely flat affect like a lot of actors who go yeah. into voice acting do. Mm. Um, but also, why not just give him the. He's not a terrible voice actor either. No, he's no, a that's, bunch of voice yeah. acting, yeah. Um, but also, why doesn't Garfield have the same Garfield voice he's always had? The one where he goes, oh. Yeah, exactly. Right. The Bill Murray voice. The yeah. Bill Murray voice, exactly. Or the Lorenzo music voice. That's right. It's a fun thing. Um, yeah, and I guess any, anyone but you, which is the big, it's the big rom-com of the season. That's right. Rom-coms are back for that's good. That's right. Uh, even though there were several this year and they all bombed. But uh, this, <laughs> right. this is the one that'll do this it. This is the one, yeah. Because it's got abs. And we know the story this time around. Yeah, so the, the premise is, because for people who don't remember, the last trailer yep. was a little bit disastrous in the sense that you – there was it, what it, is this? It didn't give anything away. It was all yeah. vibes. It was all sexy vibes. It could have been a Mint Mobile commercial. Could have been a Mint Mobile commercial. Mm. But this one, so it's so Glenn Powell and Sydney Sweeney's characters. They went on a date once. They ultimately decided they didn't like one another. Oh, but uh, they they're going on a destination wedding. Yuck mm-hmm. to Sydney. Double yuck. Boo. And it turns out they both there's the, each of one of them has a somebody there that they want to they need to trick into thinking they're a couple. So That's they're right. going to do that. But what if they fall in love? I don't think. They will. Okay. I think they'll fall off the boat and drown. Yeah, I think that's probably what's going to happen. Yeah. Okay. I think they'll get with the people they want to get with, and I that, like that. the movie will end. That seems they don't seem like they like each other. That's probably for the best. Yeah, I think so too. To be honest, yeah. Mm. Oh, by the way, this time goes below. If you're doing a jump to anything, Colin yeah, Swerdit yeah. says, put these, puts this. I hope this. I hope this movie ends with them both not getting together. Yep. And then years later, they encounter the people they were trying to get with on this on this, mm. uh, you know, this, farce. This farce, farcical vacation. Mm. And like the woman's like, oh, you were trying to make me jealous, mm. but you, you, you appeared to have a girlfriend, so I didn't do anything. <laughs> Why would I mean, like basic societal convention yeah. would suggest that I wouldn't try and get with you. It if you would had have a been girlfriend. more attractive if you were secure in yourself mm. and weren't chasing anything. That's right, and were just just being a cool guy, or just ask me out on a date like yeah. normal, you know? Or maybe you had a cool car. Yeah, cool car. Yeah, that's the key to anything, isn't it? Or you had abs. Or oh, had abs, yeah. Oh. Oh, my God. Oh. Oh. Well, I'm going to jump off this boat then. <laughs> oh, my God. Anyway, forget all that. Don't even worry about it. Because, <laughs> Mason, next up, we've got the fabled, or some even say much maligned, in association with Marvel <laughs> that's right. tag at the mm. start of this trailer. I would say it's a guarantee of badness. <laughs> yeah. Bad to fine? No, bad to less bad, but still bad. So you don't like either of the? I thought you liked one of the Venom movies, maybe. It's fine. I mean, yeah. they haven't gone back. That's to what it. I said. Bad to fine. Have we done a commentary on Venom one? I don't, maybe. See, we don't know. Did we? It feels like something we would have done. Yeah, but then we didn't. But or we did. Yeah, that's right. So don't. I just don't know. Let me check. <laughs> there are people screaming at they their really iPods are. right now. They're like, you didn't, you stupid idiots. I don't think we have. Okay. Oh, maybe that's next on the list. Yeah. Maybe I'll maybe it'll reignite my love for the Spum universe. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, somebody who's kind enough, uh, Raw Collings actually, of course, who edits this, has put the list up on um, on Reddit and no, we haven't done it. And if anybody knows, it's him. Yep. Yeah, we haven't done any Spum, I don't think. Anyways, done? Mason, so basically anyway, Madam- It's time for the ladies to do some Spum. That's right. Let me just say this, all right? Let me just say this and we say this a lot. Maybe <laughs> I say it a lot. Anything can be good. Absolutely. 
Not and this, though. No, wait. Okay. The director of this is S.J. Clarkson. She's directed episodes of mostly TV, but Jessica Jones' Succession, Anatomy of a Scandal was a recent series, which was oh. quite good. She's worked on genuinely good things. Okay. But this is spam we're talking about, so That's this right. is going to be terrible. The bar is low. Yep. But the standards at the studio are also low. That's right. <laughs> That's their slogan. Two. That's what it says when you come into their offices. It's above the it's above the the, the desk of the the receptionist. Just two bars to trip over on your way in. Yeah, one after the other. <laughs> in fact, that's all you have to do to get the gig. Because there's two bars. <laughs> And you just have if to hop could, them. Yeah. No, I think they'd give them to you if you tripped over them. If you cleared them, they'd be like, absolutely not. Oh, yeah, yeah, We yeah. don't do you, that here. What do you think? You're too good for us? <laughs> no, but I just went over the get out. <laughs> get out. So somebody mentioned that this looks like one of those movies that was revealed in the Sony hack. Remember they were like, Aunt May is a spy and it's the 70s. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. You know, it's like, I don't know. I can't even think of another example. Just, just <laughs> terrible nonsense. Yeah, uh-huh. you know, it's that. I mean, because there's like Ben Parker is in this. Who's, it's Adam Scott this time which around. Which is like, yeah, like the cast is good, and you know, even the idea of like there's an evil Spider Man that they well, have see, to that, defeat. Was, first of all, I was going to say like that thing you this th- the thing you said earlier, uh, which I was going to make fun of, which is anything can be good. <laughs> You're right, you know. And again, you know, the the reason the Avengers lineup is the way that it is in the movies is because those characters didn't sell and they yeah. you know they were they were just available and they made it work and they got you know stars that were um they also put them in costumes they sure did and, and they, individual and they, movies and they made they made up just a they made up they they told some tall tales about them that weren't even real yeah. they weren't even real stories about those actors true but uh, you know so these characters could be good yeah. you know they they are all pre-existing Spider-Man characters, which is why Spum gets first crack at it. But you don't just want to go, let's just make a Spider-Woman movie? Yeah. Like, why is it... Why is it all the Spider-Women? Four different Spider-Women, and I I can guarantee it, because we get glimpses of, like, them in the costumes and whatever, but I reckon that's a look into the future or a bit at the end, maybe. I I mean, that's no, that's 100% the final battle. Yeah, I don't even think it is. I would be shocked if that was in the actual movie. the, the... The premise is kind of interesting, I thought. Or Agreed. at least initially. But yeah. Also, by the way, uh, this trailer has, I think, pretty much the whole movie in it. Yep. So if you don't want to know anything about it, don't watch the trailer or listen to us talk about it right now. <laughs> Skip ahead. It seemed like it – so Dakota Johnson's character yep. has – is getting visions. She's got Nicolas Cage's next powers from the movie Next. Or Knowing? No. Maybe it's a combination of, oh, maybe it's a combination of Nicolas Cage's next powers and Nicolas Cage's knowing powers. Oh, wow. Yeah. The two of his best powers. She's got next knowing. <laughs> But so she's receiving visions yep. that there is. Because she died, she, she did. fell into a multiverse. Maybe she fell into some water. Yeah, she's but a you, paramedic. Because Madam Web in the comics is like a a woman who's like ninety years old and sits in a big web chair. One of the versions of Madam. Web okay, is, calm yeah. down, nerd. <laughs> But then I think the current version is is a pre existing was a spider woman. Okay, right. Like one of the spider women, like the. But this one has the name of original Madam Web, right? Or she know. doesn't. I don't. Madam Web. Yeah, sure. I don't know, man. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot about this that I'm I'm not even going to pretend that I know. Mm. But anyway, she's she she is she was a paramedic. Yep. Because she loves to save lives. Who, yeah. It's very doesn't? noble. Uh, and but she drowns and then she comes back with uh, next knowing powers. Yep. Uh, Nicholas Cage next knowing powers. Mm-hmm. Nicholas's next knowing powers, <laughs> and and she keeps receiving visions of a Spider Man esque character yeah. who keeps murdering her and a bunch of other women. Yes. and I thought that was quite interesting. Yeah, because it's like it, you know, if you're in a Spider Man universe, there'd be weirdo copycats and totally. psychopaths, and... and this one happens to have actual spider powers. It seems because, or at least murder powers. Sure, but he can jump and swing, maybe, maybe and strangle. Sure, but there's a moment where like she's like, "What's the line?" Because her oh, mother mm. is associated, much like this is in association with Marvel, mm. with uh, spider research in the jungle. Ezekiel Sims. Who, yeah. He was in the Amazon with my mom when she was researching spiders right before she died, which I think is a line that has been like 80 yards specifically for the trailer. Yeah, okay. I imagine that it's probably been patched together from other dialogue yep. in the movie. Mm-hmm. They've like, but also, you don't need this for the. Absolutely so not. You don't need it for the trailer. He Why can is just it in be the a trailer? guy murdering. He's just being weird. What's going on? Yeah. That should be the line. Yeah. What's going What's on? What's going on? Could somebody explain this to me? Well, he was Do I the, have the knowing powers or the next powers? Well, he was in the Amazon with my mom when she was researching spiders right before she died. Yeah, man. So there. Yeah, so um, there. And he wants to kill all the spider women because he also has the Nicolas Cage next to knowing powers, I think. Maybe. Or she suspects that he does. Mm. 
Mm. And the thing is, every time he goes and kills them, she can see the future and then she can go in and like circumvent that. Maybe. And then she's constantly on the run using the Nicolas Cage next to knowing powers, mm. which is quite good. Also, I think this is set in the 90s. I don't know. <laughs> it's hard to say, <laughs> it isn't might it? Be. Because if it's... If, it's, be, it's like but, Ben Parker's like... Oh, he's a bit older. But this, nothing like about it. But nothing suggests like nothing in the in the the. No, there's a computer. There's like a nineties ish computer. Oh, okay, I was going to say nothing about the clothing or whatever gives any suggestion no, it's just that it's red leather jacket and yeah, civvies on everyone else. Yeah, yeah. But I think it. What we all know each other. We're connected like a web. Well, you know each other like knowing. <laughs> yeah. That's the first clue that it's the knowing powers, not the next powers. <laughs> okay, right. isn't it? <laughs> A uh, bunch of things. Uh, I saw a little clip of Dakota Johnson. She was like, I've always loved Marvel movies. Okay. No, you haven't. Settle that. And if you did, you wouldn't do this. You wouldn't do this. You'd <laughs> avoid this specifically. <laughs> you do it. It's okay. One. But I get also, like, we'll talk about Rachel Zegler later in this yeah. episode. But I guess women can't just say it's a job. Like, it's, yeah. I, I wanted the job. They offered me the job. Yeah. They said, you look like this character. Do you want $8 million? Whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You look like this character from the comic books. Do you want to do this job? You're a good actor, whatever. Yeah. Yes, I'll take it. You yeah. can't say that because people will get mad at you. Mm. But when, whereas they won't if you're a male actor and just be like, job's a job. <laughs> job's a job. I love it. Yeah, like Tony Gilroy, who's doing like Andor, is like, I fucking hate Star Wars. He says that in every interview. <laughs> and we love him for it. Yeah, I was trying to ruin it. <laughs> I was trying to ruin it with politics. Because Star Wars has never had politics in it. So I decided I'd inject some politics in it and they'd fire me and ruin Star Wars. Yeah, man. But I accidentally made the best joke. Ah, oh, god damn it. Anyway, what were we talking about? Madam Web. Yeah. We could do a whole episode on Madam Web, the trailer, I think. Uh, oh, dude. Maybe that, we're going to. I mean, yeah, the movie we probably will. Probably won't. <laughs> don't you think? No, I don't what think. What are we'll... you doing on Valentine's Day 2024 when this comes out? I'm delivering big boxes <laughs> of heart shaped chocolates to people. <laughs> and then I'm going to have to deal with the police arriving and oh, okay. so yeah, on yeah, and yeah. so forth. Um, well, that's very, this is a very romantic date for a Spider Man movie. Absolutely, it is. Yeah, um, yeah. What are we talking about? It feels flat. Like all yeah. the dialogue feels really it's flat. It's so weird, yeah. And it's like there's the – I mean it's again, it's a trailer. The chemistry is like off and weird and stilted and it's mm. – Oh, that's what we were going we to say. So it's probably set in the 90s because yeah. I'm – my guess would be she's going to receive a premonition that Ben Parker is going to – Peter Parker at some point? Well, yeah, he's going to – yeah, he's going to get Peter Parker or they have to – you know, he has to be – he has to he has to live to raise – Peter Parker to become Spider Man, so yeah, they're okay. there to, yeah. they have to save him, and he's going to get Final Destination. Oh my god! But she's going to use her next knowing powers to to figure out how to stop that. Okay, gotcha. Because the so the villain is a guy called Ezekiel Sims. Yes, as I understand, and he is he was part of that totem storyline in this in the Spider Man. So, Which is that so pre um so pre Spider Verse with all the you know the the Spider Man vampires and etc. Sure. The the premise was Morlin. Yeah, Morlin. Yeah. Morlin will be in the end credits. Oh, my God. And it God. will have to be something to do with Spider-Man, yeah. if I had to guess. You thought you had the next knowing powers. Well, I've got them even bigger. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm a vampire, I think. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> You'd agree, won't you, Vulture, who never lifts his mask to show that it's Michael Keaton? Yeah. <laughs> what about you, Morbius? I'm Morbius. <laughs> I'm a different type of vampire. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he's a vampire yeah. too. So but got... when we're hanging out, even though you're clearly a villain and I'm, I'm Morbius yeah, and yeah, I'm a yeah. hero in this universe. Because we're building towards the worst Sinister Six combination of people. <laughs> yeah, we got Morlin. <laughs> yeah, we got him. We've got evil Spider-Man and Jared Leto's And Morbius. another evil spot. we got Venom <laughs> and uh, we've got Toxin or something. I don't know. <laughs> we've got Toxin. The Toxin's there. That has something to do with Spider Man, I imagine. No doubt. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so Ezekiel, so there was the premise a few years ago. They, I say a few years ago, probably a, probably fifteen years ago, <laughs> they tried to retcon Spider Man's origin to change his powers slightly. Okay. So they, they the the idea was that it wasn't the radioactive spider that altered Peter Parker's DNA that gave him spider powers. It was that. There was like a supernat. There are like supernatural totems in the form of animals, and they can transfer their powers to you via magic. Can I just say something? Go on. I fucking hate this. Pretty good, right? <laughs> and so the idea was that this there was a spider that wanted to give its powers to Peter Parker. Okay. And it had to do it because the but fact it couldn't speak English. Couldn't speak English, and also was dying because of the radiation. But that was unrelated. Okay. So then it, it bites Peter Parker and it gives him the spider powers. Yep. But then it, I guess because. The spider powers didn't entirely translate, which is why he doesn't. He can't shoot his own webs. He has to build the web shooters. But then he went. Remember, this he is went, around the time when he became 
organic web shooters yeah. Spider-Man? So he, he got cocooned and when then he came out, he held organic web shooters. Yeah. And I think he's back to normal now. He is, yeah. Normal-ish. He sealed him up. He hot glued gum them <laughs> shut. That's exactly right. <laughs> he used Sally's No More Gaps. <laughs> <laughs> Gross. Corked up all his holes. <laughs> so gross. Um, anyway, so this is the, this is one of those totem guys, and he's he's got Spider Man powers because of magic, mm. and maybe he ate some spiders. I don't know. And he was working in the jungle with his mother. Yeah, and she yeah, got yeah, the spider yeah, 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 yeah. He ran into a spider. I'm not even entirely sure he's a bad guy in the comic books because okay. I didn't read any of this because it's bad. Yeah, sure. Um, well, it could be really good. You can't say it. you can't pass that judgment. No, Should read true. it all mm. and then tell me whether it's bad because yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, not yeah. going to read it. Yeah, because I think it's bad. <laughs> Anyway, he's that guy because he's available, I sure. guess. Well, yeah. yeah, isn't he just – but yeah. again, anything can be good. Yeah, but again, as as an idea, I thought it was quite – I thought they were like, oh, this is a sort of Final Destination horror. They're going to – you know, it's it's them attempting to survive this, this supernaturally strong yeah. Spider-Man type character. That's a bit of fun. Yeah. But I think it's going to degenerate into well, where they all get spider powers at the end. Yeah. And, uh, and they beat him up. I don't think they're going to do the suits because one of them's got like the metal arms and that. And where are you even getting those at this point, you know? Who are they going to? Totems. No, it's magic. Oh. It's magic. Sorry. Is it? Sorry, I don't make the rules. It's magic. I hate. Yep. All right, cool. Look, yeah. I tell you, I, I give Spum this. Yes? You keep me on my toes. Okay. I never know what you're going to do. Right? You know? I never thought this was real, <laughs> but it's real, man. So, okay, so it's Sydney Sweeney, Celeste O'Connor, and Isabella Merced yep. as Julia Carpenter, Maddie Franklin, and Anya Corazon. Cool. So those are the, which you think is Spider-Woman, different Spider-Woman and Silk, I think. Okay, right, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I I think they're gonna, I think it's going to be magic, magic powers and magic costumes. Well, some spider people are magic, you know. That's what I'm saying, man. That's what we know. Yeah. God. That's what we know. Anyway, should we move it along? Uh Yes. Unless you have anything more to say about God, it feels like the end of the episode. <laughs> you know? So should we have should we should we go to bed and come back tomorrow? <laughs> no, we're gonna, both have a lie down. We gotta talk about this. Okay. So Kang Dynasty, which is the first of the next two Avengers movies, might be being retooled to move away from Jonathan Majors' as Kang. Well, I have a hot scoop or shot of poop. We can do that too. Yeah. So do you wanna when do you wanna work that in, or do you want to go through this and then you mention No, it? you do this. Okay. You do this. So uh if you watch the end of Loki Mason, I don't know whether you have yet, there's very much the the end, they're like, oh, we got all the Kangs and we're going to get all the Kangs. Don't okay. even worry, we're going to keep getting all the Kangs. But according to Deadline, Destin Daniel Cretton, who uh, he's departed the Avengers Kang Dynasty and he was set to direct. So instead of that, he's going to be working on Shang-Chi 2 and the Wonder Man series, which also might be retooled or cancelled, I don't know. Mm. Um, and then according to The Ringer and Joanna Robinson specifically, who wrote the book recently on the MCU and the rise and et cetera, and she's had a lot of scoops in relation to this, she said, I heard from somebody recently, the screenwriter Jeff Loveness, who wrote Quantum Mania, who was supposed to write The Kang Dynasty. Anyways, it's confirmed. I had it confirmed to me he's no longer working for Marvel. I asked the person why, and they said the reason why is because he was all wrapped up with the Kang storyline, and they are likely going to be a moving away from that. Oh. Yeah. Now, now James, here is uh, our, our sometimes repeated segment, Hot yep. Scoop or Shot of Poop. Love it. Let's which go. Which listener provides us with a – the tip, uh-huh. uh, but behind the some, some behind the scenes scuttlebutt, mm-hmm. some absolute scandalous material, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and we have to, and, and it might be a hot scoop. Yep. But then it might again, it might be a shot of poop because anybody can email in. Obviously, weeklyplanetpod at gmail dot com. Correct. Look, there's some there's some ground rules here. Yep. There's a hot scoop. Obviously, uh, uh-huh. but if it turns out to not be true, you have to do a shot of poop. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't make the rules. But it's but never been not true, luckily. So that's far. true. Yeah. That's always far. been right. Yeah. yeah. So let's. But, but so the let's shot of poop. Can, this, the shot of poop keeps getting bigger. Let's see what this random person. Has to Hang say. on, wait, there's one more rule, as you as you well know, James. If this is reported yep. in the in the real media, oh, that's right, as opposed to the fake media, which is us, yeah, um, they have to say that it's from the podcast, the Weekly Planet, and their segment, Hot Scoop or Shot of Poop. That's right. And if you don't, you're a dog. <laughs> that's all I'm saying. You can people, still do it. People will harass you. Yeah, as well. yeah, that's right. Okay. Which has nothing to do with us. Now I won't give this person's name. Okay. But they emailed in and they said Kang Tip, and they provided their IMDb. Page. Okay, well, I mean, anybody can do oh, that's that. That's what I'm Mason. saying. That's what I'm saying, you know. Yeah, that's what on. I'm saying. But uh, they're, they're like, this is this is to prove I'm I'm legit. Mm-hmm. Uh, dear James and Meso, long-time listener, thank you for helping get me through COVID and the more recent world crisis, the WGAS uh, SAG strike. You're welcome. We were administering mm-hmm. those shots and picketing every day. That's exactly right. Yeah. Uh, while working on the movie Devotion, which you recall is the Glenn Powell, Jonathan Majors, Jonathan Majors yeah. uh, 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 fighter, F- pilot. fighter pilot movie. Yeah. Uh, while working in the movie Devotion, I was friends with one of Jonathan Major's people during our filming JM Close the Kang Deal. 
I remember asking said friend about it and they shared some details, X number of movies, X number of dollars. And more interestingly, due to the nature of the character and potential multiple versions, JM had a contract clause stating that only he could play any and all versions of Kang. Oh, that's it. This likely explains why the rumors are dumping Kang for Doom instead of recasting. Yeah. Because as we know, Kang is a multiverse guy and yeah. he could be anything. Yeah. Like he could be anyone. You could just recast immediately. He could be a lizard. Yeah. They could just go, oh, time travel shenanigans. He looks like this now. Yeah. So. Oh, that's very interesting. That's if true. true. If true. Yeah. Mm, if true. Okay. Anyway, that's our hot scoop or shot of poop. But I guess there'd also be a clause of like. There would if, be a if it was proven that like it was something like that he did something that came out yeah then that would issue make this all void there would be but a, that would, with it, that, it's it's going to be a while to get to that point yeah though, right it'd be a morals clause yeah, I guess like, like a uh, like a don't bring the but that's pretty like why fight why fight that you know yeah. when you could just move away that's just, true yeah just, just it'd be a, like a like a don't bring the company into disrepute yeah. kind of situation again I mean maybe you know maybe lawyers are you know working on both maybe one side is like one way and the yeah. other side is like a different way. Yeah, yeah. Some would suggest that I lost my train of thought in the middle of that sentence. No, 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 I didn't think so. Yeah, seamless, right? It was absolutely beautiful yeah. and seamless. If I were a Hollywood screenwriter, they'd call me Jeff Seamless. Would they? Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you mean you could just use your real name or whatever. No, I'd be, um, I'd be Jeff Seamless. Now, it's interesting. I came, I came across this list because they're obviously looking for a new actor to take on the, a new villain and whether it be like a Doctor Doom mm. or Mephisto or whatever. Yep. Um, You know, a chair with a sword. It doesn't matter. <laughs> a chair with a sword? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just the sword is on the chair? Yeah, yeah. Leaning against it? Absolutely. Great. And they want to avoid controversy, right? So this list, this is what it includes. And I didn't make this up. This is a real list. These are the names that they've got that they think they should bring in. Starting to think uh, you've made They've got this Sean list Penn as one of them. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah. A guy with famously no legal troubles, nothing shady in his past. <laughs> Correct. Sean That's right. Penn, sure. Uh, Jared Leto. Well, he's already Morbius, so you could probably just work that in. And he's normal. Mm. And not, no one's ever said anything about that guy. That's true, yeah. Uh, it says here the bones and ghost of Michael Jackson. Oh, I see what you're doing here. So, <laughs> no, again, this is a list. <laughs> okay. The next one is the doctor that killed Michael Jackson. Oh, huh. yeah. Wow. And the last one just says Dr. Phil. So, look, none of these are my top choices. I understand, sure. And I think a lot of these aren't even <laughs> controversy free. Yeah. Would you say? I, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, you know, but whatever. Yeah. It's not really up to me. Huh. Let's, Where'd let's, you get that list? <laughs> somebody, um, it was on Twitter. On Twitter, it's on X. Wow. So if I just if I just searched on Twitter for all those names, yeah, I mean it's not working very well as a platform. No, that's <laughs> actually true. That's actually true. Mm. Anyways, here's some casting that we know for sure, though. Probably, uh... multiple trades have reported this. It's probably it's it's I would even say definitely a lock. But Pedro Pascal is Reed Richards. Yeah, okay. Nah. And now that, that has not been confirmed. I only know this because the community note. I would say the... it's been confirmed everything short of Marvel saying it. Okay. I think they're waiting to cast everybody mm. and then they will make the announcement. Yeah, right. Okay, yeah. yeah. So apparently, according to the In Snyder. I think they should re- reveal the cast over five days. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's right. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. Doctor Doom is the last one. No, no, no. They do. They do. They leave a day. They do three. And then they do somebody's first name and then their last name the day after. Brilliant. Yeah. So apparently they wanted Jake Gyllenhaal, but he was too much money. There was a similar situation a while back with Adam Driver. Mm-hmm. Um, I like this casting of Pedro Pascal. Yeah. I think my only concern would be like he's like nearly 50 and he's got yeah. there's probably going to be nine to 12 years of movies. Well, I'm also thinking. And does he want to do that? This, I mean, a lot of people have, have questioned why is it taking so long to reveal this cast? Yeah. You know, because they haven't locked it. Well, because like, they haven't locked it, and mm. the reason they haven't locked it is because at this point nobody wants to lock themselves into ten years of movies no. in a, what might be a sinking ship. Ugh. Like maybe this movie turns it all around. Maybe I, the spum, I hope it does. Maybe the spum takes off. Maybe spum takes and off, everyone, and everyone flees to the spum. That's exactly right. Mm-hmm. Give me more of that spum, they'll say. <laughs> as much as you I know? can handle, mm. which is all of it. That's right. Uh, so but what, yeah, so but yeah, like nobody wants to be. Yeah, I'm, sh- I'm sure there are people out, and, and also. Uh, you know, establish actors. Yeah. If you haven't been cast in a Marvel movie now, it's probably it might be because their their representatives are like, no, don't do it. Yeah. Don't don't do let's, it, man. Let's just see. Yeah. Let's just see what happens. I might, you know, and, and a lot of them is, might be like, you know, like a Brie Larson and an Academy Award winner. Yeah. Where they're like, you want to deal with this? You want to mm. deal with this for ten years? Yes. Great. Do you? I don't. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to do no, it. No. Absolutely not. No. Yeah, yeah. Although you get millions of dollars, wouldn't you? That's true. That's a good part of it. Yeah. That's probably one. Not of the initially. Upsides. No. Well, I reckon he would. Yeah. I mean, because yeah, yeah. he's in he's in Star Wars. He's in the last. Well, he's sort of in Star Wars. Yeah. <laughs> he's not really in Star Wars anymore. Uh-huh. Um. And but he's doing a million things. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Uh but I I think I would never have. 
picked him. Like it, this is the name that I would not have like even considered. But he's got his range is incredible. Mm. Like uh, I think this is fine. Oh. Um, it'll this will probably hopefully work out. The In Snyder have also said that Javier Bardem is being eyed for Galactus. What I love about that is he has a big face. You've seen his sure, big yeah. emotive face. Mm. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, so I like that a lot as well. Yeah. If that and I is think true. the the other the other rumors that have been flying around, also Vanessa Kirby, Sue Storm, Vanessa Kirby, Sue, Sue Storm, uh, the guy from the Bear, um, Eben Moss back yep. is the thing, and then the guy from Stranger Things, yes, Eddie, Eddie who has a real name, he has also. a real name, and I yeah. nearly had it, but then I've forgotten it. I mean, they've they've fan cast before Joseph Quinn. There we go. Uh, Rosario Dawson, you know, is is a soaker because there was a boss logic edit where she looks like yeah. And, you know, a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff happened in the meantime. But yeah, they cast her. They cast her, yeah. That, yeah. That they did, so, yeah. No, absolutely. So that's fun, isn't it? Hmm. Yeah. So there you go. Fantastic Four. That'll I'm – ama- I'm, I imagine by the end of the year we'll probably, if not sooner, we'll know that full cast. Yes. Yeah. Or not. Yeah. I think they should do one a month for six Five months. months. Six, six months? months? Okay. Six months, yeah. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Terrific. Uh, or they could just that. not tell us. Sure. I'm happy with that. Yeah. Don't tell us. And then we'll give figure us a trailer. It out. Yeah, oh, yeah. We'll figure it out when the movie starts. Absolutely. When we when the characters are introduced. But then you'll spend the whole movie going, What's his name is in Stranger Things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's his name? And then in the you know, in the final battle where they're fighting Javier Bardem's giant face, I'll be like, Joseph Quinn! I'll stand up and <laughs> Joseph Quinn. <laughs> I knew it. None of you knew it. No, they didn't know. Uh, so by deadline, Maria Gabriella DeFaria has been cast to play the DC villain The Engineer, also known as Angela. Uh, Spicer? Speaker. Okay. Uh, the character is a member of the superhero team, The Authority. That's correct, yeah. Uh, I don't know anything about this character. Go. Uh, she's got nanotech blood. That's it? So she's all silver. So she's, oh, that she's, one. She's replaced I know all that blood one. with nanotech. And so she can have like, she has like a silver like sheath look and she can like morph out big guns and stuff. So that's, that's pretty, pretty cool. cool. Yeah, and do you reckon cool. she'd be the lead villain? Or do you reckon The Authority, would there be a bunch of villains within The Authority? Well, here's the thing. So, well, what's interesting. Does it say specifically she's been cast as a villain? I believe so, yes. Okay, well, it might be. I think what they're doing is they're using elements of the authority, which was a Wildstorm image series yes. about like a like a team of incredibly powerful superheroes who decide to take an active role in making the world better mm. in the image universe. Yes. And then, the, then DC had the elite, which were like a parody of them, mm-hmm. who, who decided Superman wasn't... Like cool. wasn't cool and super enough. Wasn't killing enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I th- and so I think they're probably combining aspects of that. Like the elite start out as villains, and yeah. then some of them reform. Right. Okay. So I think that's maybe what they're doing with that. Yeah. Okay. Also, this this something that was pointed out to me, and again, it's obvious in hindsight, is that all the characters thus far that have been cast in this, like all the supporting mm. superheroes, are legacy characters, and right. it's Superman legacy. So oh, they're all okay. they're all like they're all dealing with their own legacy. So it's it's the so engineer. Are they the second version of something? A Some lot of, of them are. So so the engineer, she's the second version. Right. And was the first version like just a guy in a trench coat? It was pretty much just a guy in a trench yeah, coat. Yeah. yeah. That's often this, um, these things go. Uh well he also had the nanotech powers. Anyway, um yeah, but then we've got then we've got the Green Lantern is Guy Gardner. Yep, who's, who's is he second? Was no, he he's third? not second, but he's like, you know, subsequent. Yeah. Uh, and then we've got Mr. Terrific, who's the second Mr. Terrific. Yep. And I think it would be whoever else is – and it's Hawk Woman. Yeah. And I think she's – Second Hawk she Woman. She might be the second Hawk Woman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Was there a Hawk Woman in Black Adam? Or was there no, only a Hawkman? It was only a Hawkman. Mm. Good movie. Mm. Good movie? Yeah. Good movie. Yeah, great, great movie. <laughs> yeah, great movie. Yeah, great movie. In hindsight, did a lot better. Like we rinsed it at the time, but it's doing a lot better than a, than a bunch of movies this year. I tell you that much, Mason. I didn't hate it. I thought I it was fun. I would tell you that much. It was fun. Do you think that this movie is being overwhelmed by supporting characters that no, aren't Superman? Because if it was a normal movie, mm-hmm. it was just there's just people in it. Nice. You know, there's a lot of yeah, people yeah. in a movie. It's fine. Yeah, and I like think... I don't think they're all going to get forty minutes of screen time. No, that's you know? true. Yeah. yeah, and also, yeah, I I think again, if I'm critical of the Christopher Reeve movies, and I am, what's that? That's right. Uh, it's just it's a lot of Superman fighting regular guys, <laughs> sure. and I, you know, it's nice to see him yeah. battle people of equal power, I and mean, not only that, like variations in powers, yeah, which I quite cool like too. as well. Yeah. All right. Mm. Coyote versus Acme Mason. Oh, yes. Just a few things to start off with. Phil Lord, who you might know uh, is 
Phil Lord, Chris Bell. Not personally. No, you don't know him? Spider-Verse, other things, worked on whatever Lego movies. He said, Cody versus Acme is wonderful. Uh, Dr. Uh, D. Green Machine nails it. Hilarious, smart, existential, and moving, and makes makes his all-time character more relevant than ever. So there's a bunch of people coming out saying, I've seen this and I love mm. it. It might even be the best Warner Brothers movie. The U.S. Uh, Congress have called for an investigation into these kind of shenanigans. Well, one guy did. One guy did, yeah. Probably for clout. Probably for cool clout. But Puck News came out and said, Backlash! Warner Brothers have now opted to allow the filmmakers behind Cody vs. Acme to search for another distributor. Cody vs. Acme screenings are now being set up for streaming services such as Amazon Prime, Video, Apple, and Netflix. Mm. So because of the public outcry about this, and so they are actually going to potentially let people see this movie that they already made, that they were then going to yeah. shelf to save $30 million, but also ultimately lose a bunch of money on it. Well, exactly, yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah, so the the... You know, there was a great public backlash, but I think probably the as as I understand it, the the main reason for this backtracking is because a lot of people with some clout who are gonna make movies with Warner Brothers or yeah. make stuff, maybe animation or TV or whatever, contacted Warner Brothers and were like, We're reconsidering yeah. being a part of you know, working working with you. If because, you're just gonna do this. Yeah, if you're just gonna do this. So yeah, absolutely. So, you know. Well, speaking of Warner Brothers, this is great news as well. The New York Times did a profile on David Zaslav. I love that CEO guy. Warner Brothers. Yeah, he's a good and he's normal. Normal, he's normal. normal. You look if, at the, him. if I was gonna pick a word to describe him, it would be normal. <laughs> <laughs> he said in terms of the strikes that happened, uh, he said, they were right about almost everything. So what if we overpay? I've never regretted overpaying for great talent or a great asset. This fucking guy. Man. You're overpaid, David Zaslav. <laughs> like, You're being paid to ruin everything. You dragged everything. this out for months. It is. Like, it is are a, you kidding me? It with is this astounding shit? that the board has not. He must be like such a like such a smooth talker. Or they're all board men. Or they're all incredibly stupid. They're all stupid. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> what are we doing? But just the nerve to be like, yeah, it's good actually. What happened? Mm. Fuck you. <laughs> All right, let's move it along just quickly, Mason. What do you mean? Also, this this thing about overpay. Oh, I've never. Um, you're under, you've underpaid everybody. Ah! You, you, you have nothing. If you don't have the writers <laughs> and the performers and the directors, you have nothing. That's right, yeah. Anyways, before we talk about three hour Hunger Games prequel, uh, The Marvels is having its a bad second week box office run. Mm. We know last week it broke records in terms of being one of the, lo- the lowest opening for a mm. MCU movie. Yeah. Um, apparently it's going to be lucky to make $10 million in its second weekend. It earns $2.8 million on Friday, which is down a staggering 80%, 87% from its opening day last week, which <laughs> also wasn't great mm. then. Um, this is the biggest second week drop for an MCU film What's the ever. other one? Oh, that's uh, the biggest. What's the next lowest, I wonder? Probably Ant-Man, maybe. Or, yeah, maybe Last Ant-Man. Ant-Man. Yeah, I don't know. But, um, yeah, yeah. yeah, like, you know, we did talk about maybe this is a thing that will, you know, they leave it in cinemas and it, you know, gets a bit of momentum. Mm-hmm. But, no, this is... Dead. Yeah. This is going to be on streaming by tomorrow. Yuck. <laughs> there you Yucky. go. Anyway, it's fine. I thought it was all right. I but, it was uh, fun. You know, yeah, it's fun. Know, it is what it is. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of people are doing a little song and dance. So they're I think, it, like, like, as we it. said, I think there should have been more song and dance. Oh, yeah, that's true. In the movie yeah. itself. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right, all right. Should we move it along? Let's move it along. Three Hour Hunger Games prequel. Woo! Did somebody say Three Hour Hunger Games prequel? No. Oh, okay. Oh no, I did earlier, moments yeah, ago. Yeah, you but did. there was a little break. Yeah, we took a break. We took a break. You were concerned that the uh, the we would perhaps not recorded anything. But we do have the backup recorder. Recorder Montal <laughs> So it's great. Yes, it's fine. Here's a couple of uh, just before we get started. Here's a couple of uh, p- pieces of news that I I wanted to squeeze in, but uh, you, one you 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 were not interested in season. I didn't the, say the, that. The trailer for season two of Reacher. And I only, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. but the only reason I uh, mentioned this was like a week ago. But the only reason I uh, was interested in talking about it is because someone on Twitter, I think it was Vice Victus on Twitter, called him the Vanilla Gorilla. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, that's good stuff. That is very good stuff. <laughs> uh, and he absolutely is. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Cool. <laughs> and the other thing, did I don't know if you saw this? There's a there's a, a doc a documentary came out. Uh, this week, or at least some some clips of it, Robo Doc, which is the creation of the Ro- oh, is this the, Robo- the Peter Weller yes. from Red Oreos? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> yes. there's a there is a uh, there's an anecdote from I think one of the one of the Armory guys or yeah. one of the stunt coordinators on the original RoboCop. Yep. And this should this- we just get Collings to play it? Uh, Can we just play the clip? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, but I'll look. I'll describe okay, it yeah, in, yeah. in the interim. I'll describe it. Maybe so. we'll play it at the end yeah. of the show. So this so this so the stunt guy. Is uh is handing um Peter Weller his his big Robocop gun so he yeah. can do a particular scene. And he's also carrying like a he's got a big handful of Oreos. Yeah. And so and uh, and 
Peter Weller looks at this guy and he says, Robo wants an Oreo. <laughs> and the guy says, listen, it's just you and me up here. We, we're doing this scene. It's, you're, I'm the only one here. Peter wants an Oreo. <laughs> You, you can have one, but you don't have to do the thing where you're in carry. And then he marches off to like he, to the like a like a vantage point over the mm. scene, and he starts yelling, "Robo wants an Oreo." <laughs> and what I love about that is that he would have done it. You know, there's in RoboCop two where there's a point where he's trying to find out where the drugs are from, and he's like, "Where is it made?" <laughs> yeah. Like it'd be that cadence, and it'd be like, "Robo wants." An Oreo. <laughs> and then it escalates. Yeah. Then Peter Weller interjects at the very end, mm. that, which is – anyway, we'll play it at the end. Yeah, we'll Colleagues put it. It's yeah, very nice. good. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, three hours, three hour Hunger Games prequel. Here we go, Mason. On a budget of $130 million, though, according to Variety, it's only $100 million. Oh, when that $30 cheap. million dollars disappears. Great so. question. Probably Rachel Ziegler's pockets. No doubt. Uh, the box office return on this is a 45 million US opening, which is short of the 50 million that was projected. This is well under the others. They're about a hundred. They open about a hundred million mm. plus each. Well, it's been a bloody long, long, a long time, time between drinks. I tell you what. It's also, um, yeah, I, I did, it, it's it's okay, like in terms yep. of numbers, but it'll have to like it'll have to grow and whatever over the, mm. the coming weeks to 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 be considered a massive smashing success. Oh. Uh, what is incredible about this movie is, first of all, what do you think the story was? Oh, come on, mate. Yeah. All right, so. It's uh, it's it's a prequel to it's the Hunger, Hunger Games, Games, yeah. But it's still the Hunger Games. They're doing some Hunger Games, yeah. And uh, and they're you know, it's just early days for the Hunger Games. They're working out the format. Yeah, you know, sure. They're um, why aren't people watching the Hunger Games? I don't know. Maybe because you put an eight year old girl with Down syndrome in a fighting arena. Exactly, and then somebody's gonna dome her with a brick or whatever. <laughs> like what's what's yeah. happening here? Yeah, unbelievable. It's, bad. it's unpleasant. Yeah. Uh, but then who? Who who might reinvigorate the Hunger Games? Who's gonna do it? But a young whiz kid, a beautiful, handsome Mr. Snow, blonde hair, Donald Sutherland's character. Yep. Except it's not Donald Sutherland; it's a younger man. His name's Tom Blythe, portraying him in the past. That's right. Yeah, which is our future. Whoa! If indeed this is set on Earth. Whoa! Which I'm not convinced it is. Who cares? Because something because they wear skirts with pants. That's true. All together, they do that, don't they? And that is very unusual. In a lot of ways, they're very progressive. That's In other right. ways, they do Hunger Games. Mm, that's true. There's yeah, different things happening. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. So what is wild to me is that this is ten minutes longer than the movie Napoleon, apparently, <laughs> okay, right. which presumably, and I haven't seen it yet, spans the length of Napoleon's life. Are you sure? Where this spans mm. maybe a month and a half. Oh, look, yeah. at this, look at this ugly little baby. Put a weird hat on him. <laughs> Give him a very wide hat. He's so skinny and sickly. We're going to, mother, put a big wide hat on him. <laughs> Why? Look, <laughs> he, look, he's going out to conquer something. Put a big wide hat on him so he can't get through the door. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. It's his look now. Yeah, that's right. It's the thing that gives him power. <laughs> um, I, look. Oh, it's the it's it's the future now, and he's died. He's conquered everything, but he's died. Now let's symbolically take his hat on so we can fit him in his grave. <laughs> so Napoleon will return. <laughs> in what kind of sequel? Pre- prequel, I guess. I mean, Napoleon. Oh, okay, right, gotcha. Oh. Because he was all goes to Egypt. Goes to Egypt, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dogs so, here. Hello, Ali. Hello. Look, I know the last book they split into two, but this I feel like look. It, they shouldn't have split this. Now, this is based movies. on a book as well. Like, it is, the, yeah, the, it's based the, on a the, prequel the, book. The, 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 this is, okay, right. Suzanne Collins, so the okay, name is, yeah. But, like, the idea that this has to be three hours long is outrageous, quite frankly. Okay, uh-huh. This has to stop. This didn't feel right? like three hours to me. Absolutely, it did. It felt like there was a movie and then it stopped and then there was another movie. I'm gathering you didn't like this movie. No, that's the thing. I liked a lot of it. Mm. But it's just, like, what are we, it's Way too fucking long. What are we doing this for? I didn't feel like it was three hours it's at all. so long, Mason. I didn't love it. No. I'll be, be clear about that. I thought, I th- I felt like there were a lot of, there was a lot of stuff that worked in this. I agree. I thought there was a lot of interesting Except ideas. The drones. the drones didn't work. They literally they didn't, didn't work. They literally did not work. Uh, but I feel like maybe the whole thing didn't gel for me. And I'm wondering if it's because this, the the focus of this movie is about the young Coriolanus Snow, yeah. who grows up to be the worst person in the Hunger Games universe, yes, probably. Probably. You know? Yeah. And the interesting thing about that is like there you do see, first of all, you find out his sister is the tiger woman from the other Hunger Games. Oh, is that what that tigress, is? Tigress, and then she becomes oh, a tiger woman. Okay. But like, so they focus a lot on his character and why he's the way he is, and there's a moment where he's like, I loved killing that guy just then. Mm. And that's a little bit of an insight into the kind of man that he will turn yeah, into. Yeah, I love yeah. poisoning people, maybe. Mm, that's, that's a little right, bit of insight yeah. into the man that he, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, he wants to be. I don't like the sound of the name Katniss. Mm. Mm-hmm. 
But then there's Rachel, Rachel Zegler's character who's from the same district as Katniss and she's come to do the Hunger Games or whatever. Mm-hmm. And at the start, it's like, oh, there's some real, like, fight in this and she's, like, a really interesting, there's a really, like, a crazy kind of dynamic and is she... Is she manipulating the people around her? Or is she really like is genuine she manipulating about him? Is, yeah, are they are they truly falling in love, yeah. or, is, or is she trying to trick him so she can? You know. And I feel like they don't really do enough with that at all. I feel like I would have liked to know, like, what is this person actually like? Yeah, and I guess that's to more put you in his kind of mindset, where he's kind of like assuming things and guessing things. Like, yeah, because he is he is the focus of the yeah. movie. He's in almost every scene, whereas Zegler mm. disappears for she comes and goes for hours at a time. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. For days. Days at a time. For what it felt like. Mm, yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. But, yeah, no, that's not to say I disliked his, like, characterization because the idea that because of the result of the war he's, like, a very poor person from a previously well-to-do family who's laughing mm. is like a rich kid and he has to, like, yeah. you know, with the way he's, you know, wears certain clothes and, like, pretend that his driver's sick and whatever, all these right, uh-huh. different things to keep up this this pretense. Mm. Um, I thought all of that was kind of... Really yeah, I mean, I, 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 I think the 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 premise of it is interesting, mm. and lo, or like the idea of like the fall of this man to become like this awful person, or yeah. like what what you know what what the circumstances turn him into, kind of thing. Mm. But I don't know. It just yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know if I got an, enough of a, a an insight into his character as he was. Yeah, okay. To feel like him transforming into a really bad guy mm. was a was like a was like a believable arc kind sure, of thing. Yeah, okay. It just felt like it, not not a spoiler, but it just felt like, you know, he had a couple of bad days and he became the Joker. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. You yeah. know, he's like, well, I, I'm just I'm just normal and I like I just I just um, you know, I just want to survive day to day. I and, love roses and I love my family. Oh, the, a couple of bad things happened. Well, yeah. now I'm president snow. Should I use this bird which is also a tape recorder? I don't know, I'm conflicted about it. Mm. We'll talk about it in spoilers, yes. Mason. Yeah, I feel like there was some ambiguity to the characters in this which i don't know if too ambiguous is the right word but i just would have would preferred some more insight mm. um especially considering that it's a three-hour hunger games prequel sure i is. think there's some room there oh, a little bit of room yeah, maybe but that would have made it even longer yeah that's unless true unless they just wore t-shirts that said there that... no just cut out the hunger games stuff because boy do you like a boring hunger games in a concrete room <laughs> that's what they're doing this time around yeah it's what what is God. it what is interesting i think is that again the, because it's early. At least day. everybody in the universe agrees it's boring. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that that it, it's early days of the Hunger Games, so it's just they put him in a like a small stadium. Yep. With some weapons. Yep. And they just have at it. Yeah, for like ten minutes. There's very little room to hide, or, yeah. or, or you know, there's no. They're not. They're not. You know. Uh, they're not employing guerrilla warfare tactics in a forest or anything no. like that. It's just you get in a room. So it's how like many, a coliseum. How many of these have ended in 10 minutes? All because of them. Because they've all just hacked at each other with swords and then they've all died of blood loss. All of them. And people mm-hmm. aren't watching that apparently. Yeah. They think and, it's and, you t- and it needs – and so so Viola Davis's character who's the game – Games she's master. The, she's one of the, the scientists behind all this who can – she can create all these genetically engineered creatures mm. and, and and these special like ass, assassin snakes and all this sort of stuff. She doesn't have the foresight to be like people like she she's sort of genuinely stunned. Yeah, to, because uh, Snow's character is one of these students from an elite yeah. school who are brought in to mentor their the the um it's the first year of mentors. It's the first year doing. of mentoring. They're going to mentor these tributes. Mm. Uh, but but also she's you know she wants to talk to them. Viola Davis's character wants to talk to them about you know what they think about this whole thing. Yeah. And some of them are like, "This is bad." Yeah. Actually, and he and but but Snow is like, "What if people saw what these people were like?" Mm. And it's blown her mind. It's brilliant. This it's is like, brilliant. How did action. you do that? How did you come up with this? I built this big tank of snakes. <laughs> I might be able to actually use that now. Yeah, I was because con- they won't all be dead in ten minutes. Yeah, I was considering <laughs> just. It's it's weird that people didn't want to watch me just bring in ten random, twelve random people into a room and then drop a bucket of snakes <laughs> on them. <laughs> you know they, they you know. <laughs> Because they'd stick around. I guess they'd stick around. They'd stick around until they were all killed by the snakes, and then they'd switch off. Absolutely, you yeah. Know? Oh my goodness! It's not. It's not a sustained business model. No, it's ten minutes <laughs> of people being killed by snakes, and then everybody's like, "What else should we do for the day?" <laughs> and the only reason the arena is like slightly bigger than normal is because there's an attack on it. Mm. So it's like crumbled. You can kind of get underground and whatever. Yeah, right. So uh-huh. that's the only reason it goes a bit longer, mm. like this time around. But it's just so bizarre and bland, and like. 
again, it's a concrete room with some tridents in it and whatever. Mm-hmm. Sure. It's a broken bow and arrow, which means something probably. And but there is like and but you can Katniss. the Katniss. That's right. You can they've this they've this ain't your grandpappy's Hunger Games, except, except it, it is. is. It yeah. absolutely is, yeah. <laughs> this is your grandpappy's Hunger Games. That's right. There's no Just bow and how he liked here. it. Mm. So you can also like call in, you know, get water and whatever. So that's the early days of where you can bring in like you could get if you're thirsty, you can get some water and uh-huh. whatever. Yeah, yeah. And but they they rocket in at such speed. Yes, they're very like they're, they're, they're barely controlled drones. Yeah, yeah, uh-huh. which you can later be weaponized because it's clearly just just not working. How do you feel about the new host of the Hunger Games? The, sorry, the first host of the Hunger oh, Games. Oh, Lucky Lucky Flickerman. Flickerman. Yeah, love him. Some, some rye little big year for big year for Jason Schwartzman. What too. was the other one he did? Spider Verse. What? Asteroid City. Oh, yeah, he's in spite of us. He's the spot, yeah. yeah. And another thing, I'm pretty sure. This hunger, three-hour hunger. No, it's this four. This, he's in four things this year, I'm pretty sure. Jason Schwarzman. Jason Schwarzman. He was in the Darjeeling Limited, Mason. No, that was, that was from 2007. That was a long time ago. Are you thinking of that? No. Fantastic Mr. Fox? No. All right. No. Asteroid City, Spider-Verse, Quiz Lady. Hunger Games, prequel. Three-hour hunger Oh, Games and he's prequel. in, um, yeah, Quiz Lady, but he's also in bloody TV Scott show? Pilgrim. Oh, new he's TV voices, show. Yeah, yeah, the new, he's, you know, he's back in, so he's done five things this year. He's also in Digman, I Think You Should Leave, Tim Robinson, 10-Year-Old Tom. Yeah, well, this is an Tom. even bigger year for Jason Schwarzman. How I does he do it? Be. What's his secret? Uh, some of these are just voice roles. Yeah, also he's a nepotism baby. I got him, Mason. Is he? Yeah, I think he's related to someone. Huh. Is he a couple? Jason Bateman? Is, is he a Francis Ford Coppola's, like, nephew or something? Oh, he might he's be, one yeah. of those guys? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, then I take back everything nice I've said, ever said about him. Me too. Yeah. All right. Uh, but, yeah, so but you enjoyed him. Did you enjoy Peter Dinklage? Yes. As very open drug addict. Sure. Just mm-hmm. quickly drinking drugs in front of everybody before he makes a speech. I'm just going to quickly. Drink your drugs before you come out. I'm just going to quickly drink my obvious vulnerability here. <laughs> I'm just going to quickly drink that. And I hope nobody notices that for later. <laughs> Puts anything in my little drinks. Mm, he's yum, good though, yum, isn't yum, he? yum, 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 yum. Peter Dinklage. Can you drink morphine? Yes, you this can. This one you can. Wow, well, nice. Yeah, and that's cool. Hell yeah. Yeah. I think there is some, like you said, it, it does happen quick, but there is some interesting ideas about like him, this guy being heartbroken and turning the way he does. I think it's not mm. all as well. I would say get heavy. over it. Yeah, it's not as heavy handed as <laughs> plenty of other chicks in the sea. Am yeah. I right? Because you know, like also, it is a profoundly bad idea to let these guys mm. who are like the enemy. Just have them. Just let them go to the districts and hang out. Yeah, get some shore leave and just go to the districts and drink in the bars. And, yep. You know, for become friends with the with the you know the rabble and fall in love and all yep. that sort of stuff. That's going to end in tears for everybody. Absolutely ridiculous so as those, a premise. Those people don't know. So it starts with like you get selected for the Hunger Games, and then the middle hour is the Hunger Games, and then the third hour is the, it moves out towards the district. So that's mm-hmm. the kind of the, the narrative flow mm-hmm. of it and whatever. Yeah. That's where the, and all the love takes place over all of the, the, different, <laughs> right. the different hours of this that's movie. Right. And there's a bird that's a tape recorder. Sure and, it can, and, it, and it can remember what you said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, maybe that, maybe that comes up multiple yeah, times. Yeah, that's right. A real re- recorder model bar <laughs> situation. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. I thought we were in love, but you recorder model demand me. <laughs> You know? Should we do some spoilers? Uh, hang on, let me think. You know what? I thought Rachel Zegel was really good. I think she's um, great. Yeah. I liked this. The there's a lot of music in this. Well, you yes. know what I liked? The pro- production wise, everything seems to be looking real. Good, looking a good. A lot of the sets, a lot, a lot of the sets are real. All the major sets, like all the yeah, because again, it's like a stone room that they're in. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, you can but like that. you know, the the lot of the the district sets yep. are real, and yep. um, a lot of the grey fatigues are real. Yeah, a lot of they're very real. Very real. Very real. Real thing you'll ever um, see. Yeah, I think Rachel Zegg was really good, and like I liked all her singing. I yeah. liked all the songs. I thought that was that was a nice touch because you know in in the original ones, Katniss is a hunter and yes. that's her skill set. Whereas this is Rachel this, Zegler is a dodger. Lucy Lucy Gray yeah, is she's a always character. she's always dodging stuff. They're she's always an awful dodger. With an axe and she's dodging. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. I thought they, I thought those songs were good. I maybe I'll check out the soundtrack, yeah. but. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think I think apparently she did all the singing on set. Did you yeah, say that? I did say oh, that. No, I, I didn't say that, but oh. I saw that. No, oh, okay. And yeah. Now I'm saying that. <laughs> no, I said it first. Okay, fine. Yeah. I'll say it later better. Okay. Um I also thought Young Snow was good. Tom yeah. Blythe. I thought he was really good yeah, yeah. as well. Yeah. Um what I was gonna say is though, I wonder if they they felt like they had to give both of those main characters more equal screen time. Mm. Whereas maybe it would have made sense if Zegler's character was like more off in the distance. Okay, and sure. Yeah. And we all, as an as an audience member, we always wondered what her agenda was. Right. Okay. Be, but yeah. because we see her in, we see her so much in the movie, 
it does kind of feel like all her cards are on the table, really. Like I never I never really thought of her like, oh, she's maybe she's manipulating him. Yeah. Maybe she's not genuine, that sort of thing. I always felt like I knew what her like her her emotional state was, her mental yeah. state was, and she's like she's initially you know not trusting of this guy, and then she mm. you know she she uh, realizes she's got to work together, and then she you know mm. has feelings for the guy and all that sort of stuff. But in, I never I I think if you're I think because this is a Hunger Games movie, they wanted to have a female protagonist. Yeah. A Katniss esque, a Katniss esque kind, of, kind yeah. of character. Whereas I think if you just kept the the point of view to this Snow, that would be more compelling if you if you always wondered if he was in control or if she was yeah manipulate, manipulating him from the from the from the back from the Hunger Games from the Hunger Games prequel, exactly from hours. the Hunger Games prequel three hours. <laughs> That's right. It's also not quite three hours. I just want to point that out. It's like yes. two hours forty seven, including mm. credits. Um, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Look, I'm going to say best movie ever. I, yeah, I didn't, I, I didn't think it really gelled for me. No. I didn't feel like it was that long. Um, Even though it was really long. Yeah, it was I, nine minutes longer than Napoleon movie. Yeah, I feel like you could have. Yeah, you could definitely could have could have trimmed. I don't. What, what do you feel? Like, Maybe this would have been better as a series. Yeah, um, six episodes. Yeah, whoever owns it put it on their streaming service. Yeah. Uh, what What third do you think was the strongest third? Probably the first. And the very back end. I think the very for me. Yeah. I think maybe the final third, and maybe maybe that maybe that sinks my argument that I shouldn't know what her mental sure. state was. Yeah, yeah. But I don't know. I also feel like if he's like he, he if he spent the entire movie going, oh, I've got a you know, I've got a I've got to find a way to be away with this woman. Yeah. You know, and, and you know, we're gonna we're gonna escape and we're gonna make our way to the districts and mm. we'll be away from all of this, not knowing anything about her. Yeah. And then when he went out to the district with her, she was like, Hey, let's uh let's take a trip to the lake. Let's mm-hmm. uh, you know you know, how about tie this big weight around your neck, and then I'll. <laughs> it's what we do in the and district. We'll be in love. We do. We do it in the district. We put and a it's big in love. to show how our love. We it's put love. a big weight around our neck. You yeah. know, that's what know. we do in the three-hour Hunger Games. That's prequel. exactly right. Yeah, but yeah. I'm going to say generally best. Yeah, but, um, yeah, sure. Why not? Yeah. Uh, spoilers. Yes. So there's a tape recorder bit where yep. he, there's a friend he goes out to the district with. And he records him uh, maybe doing a mini uprising yes. using a tape recorder bird and then he sends it into the city where Viola Davis earlier was like, I check all the tape recorder birds. Mm, that's right. And then he's like, but I didn't do that on purpose. But like. You does did. He, does he think, what does he think? What's mm, that? That's a great. Is he kidding himself or mm. others? Also, uh, doesn't that tape also implicate him? Maybe? Yeah, he's in it. He's in the tape. but Yeah. yeah. It was like, I don't know. But I guess Viola Davis is like, well, I like this kid. Yeah, but, but I, I don't, don't like, like the other kid. And I like this thing. bird. Mm. Oh, so anyway, so the so the 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 the, the, the plot, how the plot goes yeah. is that uh he's asked to mentor uh Lucy Gray. Yep. And then uh he helps her out in the Hunger Games, he cheats, he gives her a little container of rat poison yep. so she can do a big poisoning on people. And then uh, Viola Davis is going to dump a bunch of snakes. Yes, she's going to dump a big bucket of snakes on the surviving uh, tributes. Yep. in the, to to end the Hunger Games as quickly as possible because again she doesn't know how to build tension or. It's crazy how those snakes are even alive in there, just yeah, slithering all just over slither each other. around. But luckily, this is a movie, so Snow has learned earlier yeah. that the snakes won't kill anybody if they're familiar with their scent. Yes, and he has a handkerchief that has Lucy Gray's sweat or scent or yeah. something on it, or boogers and so forth. Yeah. And so he puts it in the container of snakes before it's shipped off to be dumped on all the tributes, and then they get her scent, and so they kill everybody but her, and so mm-hmm. she is declared the winner of the Hunger Games. But 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 uh, they the 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 bad guys recover the, the the rat poison and the handkerchief and they're like you did a big cheating so we're gonna we're gonna um, peter dinklage does not like it that's right we're gonna bust you down to to mm. being a a, a grunt yep. we're gonna take send you out into the district and he's like can i be sent to district two where the the, the girl i love Twelve. is and and she's and the and the person sorting out is like i guess, sure i guess yeah whatever i don't know do you have 50 dollars? there in- should be a big note on your yeah. on your on your form that says don't absolutely do it. never do that yeah never never if he never, ask, kick him yeah he can go anywhere except district 12 yeah but <laughs> district 12 sure absolutely and then he goes and he and he finds her again and she's like "Ooh, we love that's right we, we love his she says yeah yeah but yes 
Then uh, he gets uh, – it's because his mate went with him and there's a little uprising happens mm. and he ends up betraying his mate and he shoots some people or whatever and then they have oh. to get rid of the guns. Yeah. And then the gun – and then and then they, but then his mate goes to goes to jail and by that I mean they hang him because yes. of the tape recorder bird. Oh, yeah, yeah. Record a multiple yeah. bird. Yes, that's right. And then um, – <laughs> and then – and then he goes to him and Lucy are like, let's run away together. We mm. love. We love. And so they go to the cabin. As we say in District 12, we love. Yeah. He goes to the cabin, but it turns out that under the floorboards yes. are the guns. Oh. And she's like, wow, somebody must have put them there. Whatever his name is, the other guy. Yeah, the other guy. But was that the implication that she did that and she she's one of these resistance fighters? Maybe. Because I feel I like – I guess we'll know in the sequel, again, I would, Six Hour no, Hunger Games prequel. Um, I just feel like I would have loved some more like – because then she leaves mm. and that's the last that they – Yeah. That's She kind of loses trust in him because she realises that he yeah. betrayed a friend. But again, is that enough for you to become the worst guy that's in what the I'm, world? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. all kind of like – again, it's kind of ambiguous in a way that I didn't feel – like, is he going to meet another Rachel Zegler later? Well, he does have family, so yeah. maybe. Maybe. She, and then that, then that Rachel Zegler yeah. betrays him. But she could definitely, like, if they were to do a sequel with, for this, and I don't think they will, uh-huh. she could – she's alive, obviously. For sure, yeah. You know? Uh-huh. Like, he thought he shoot her at some point. Mm. But uh, I doubt <laughs> I it. I thought we love, and then I <laughs> thought we shoot. Yeah. But who knows? No, Sad I, day for snow. I just kind of walked away from this going, like, I just wish I knew more about – what her character? Well, if there was, was some about. more runtime, if only it was saw, longer. If only it was longer, yeah. Yeah, mm. I don't know. I did like that there was a tape recorder bird. That was pretty good. Yeah, yeah. How's it work? We don't know. You, you turn the switch. Yeah, I guess. What's the range on that? It's a great question. Yeah. How's it connected to the bird? Yeah. It's a wire. Oh, <laughs> it's, connected, it's directly oh, connected. Like the movie Bird on a Wire. Exactly. Wow. Yeah. I don't know anything else you want to say? Uh, no, that's about it, I reckon. Got this from Vinton who says, hashtag Weekly Planet Pod. I appreciate they didn't separate the Hunger Games. Uh, I'm presuming here Vinton means the uh, the Hunger Games three hour prequel mm. uh, into two to, two to three movies because it certainly felt like it was two movies, but they gave Snow's full story. And I think that's pretty compelling. Best movie ever. Mm. So there you go. Anything else to say? It's too long, obviously. It's pretty we both long. agree. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Very long. Okay, right, let's next, next segment. Of, next segment is a joke. What is it? It's what we're reading. Yep. What are we going to read? Yeah. Think of something. Think of it quick. All right. Think of it during the theme song. Ah. I'm doing the theme. What are we reading today? All right, I've just started. I just started just before you got here because I've been away for the weekend. Boys oh, yes. trip, not a big deal. <laughs> just backing it up, mate, week to week. <laughs> What's that mean? Just drinking as much as I can. Oh, I, I see. Sure, sure, sure. I'm right. in quite a lot of peril. <laughs> you think so? Yeah, yeah. Because I, I have to do it again next week. You think week. this might be the last days of Mr. Sunday movies? It's very possible, mate. Wow, okay. Yeah. Is this like when a, a superstar football player gets three concussions in a row? It's exactly you what You think it's if like. you get three hangovers They're in like, a, If you do this again next week, you yeah. will definitely die. And I have to do it next week. Mm-hmm. He's got a friend flying in from oh, I know. the UK. And yeah. You know what he's like. I know what he's like. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's exactly right. Well, good luck to you. Thank you. Yeah. So um, we might try to record a little bit earlier. Yeah, we might week. have to reshuffle the pod. That We know what he's like. We're going to have to reshuffle the podcast <laughs> to factor in one of your high school friends drinking <laughs> problems. <laughs> I think that's cool. That is cool, that's yeah. That's cool. That's, that's, that's legendary, But I'm James. taking Hydrolyte out with me now, you know? Okay, sure. Keeping hydrated on the go. Mm. Um, anyways. Yes. What are you reading? Uh, I initially thought, I'm like, what What happened to my weekend? What was I doing all weekend? I was watching Bob Ross. Oh, on YouTube? Yeah. What's he up to? Well, I mean, he's, he's dead. dead. Yeah. yeah. But um, the, over the weekends, I've discovered the yeah. Bob Ross, the official Bob Ross. Because uh, other people were uploading his stuff for a while. Yeah. And getting like millions of views. Yeah, but the official Bob Ross YouTube channel has like weekend marathons. Ah. So it's always just running live episodes, like yeah. 24. They call him 24. the grandfather of ASMR, though he yeah. was well before... Uh, perverts. That, 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 all perverts. All the perverts. All yeah. the perverts, yeah. <laughs> For people who don't know, uh, Bob Ross, yeah. uh, famously Afro'd uh, yep. a, a painter. Used to used to be in the, the army, he I think. He was, yeah. And then for many years. I think it's years. a perm also. It hair. is a perm, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And he just uh, just does some real... Uh, just does a nice little painting just show. Just does a nice painting show. Very mm. calm and, and cool. Yeah. And, uh, and does ev- beautiful landscapes. But you know what? Intimately stressful, and I'll tell you why, and I think other people have this experience as well. He'll do a beautiful landscape and he'll be like, I'll just add something here. And I'm like, Bob, you're going to ruin this. <laughs> Bob, you're ruining this. It was a perfect landscape and you've, you're you putting in the... Tra- and you've... Ru- oh, no, that's perfect, actually. <laughs> it's actually perfect. Don't forget I said anything, Bob. Don't even worry about it. Oh, nice. Yeah. So you just have it on your TV? Just have it on my TV. Or is it something you would want to attempt? 
No, but I like that other people are doing it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Because there's that old oh, Wilson movie where he played a variation oh, that's on right, Bob yeah. Ross and yeah. he popped like there was a the last Deadpool movie he did a Bob Ross in the I trailer. Remember that, yeah. And all that. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. There you go. Yeah. Good stuff. Well, I just started because I uh, just before you got here, I did. I watched the first ten minutes of Monarch. Okay, great. So of course, we're waking our way through the four new MonsterVerse movies, mm-hmm. and uh, they all lead into Monarch. And so, this is a prequel sequel. Uh, it's, yeah, it's set after Godzilla twenty fourteen, but before oh, King of Monsters, I think. Interesting. I don't know okay. Specifically, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's fun. So no. So spoilers. No. So there'll be there'll be no, no celebrity king, cameos. No King Ghidorah. I presume no not. King Kong probably no, but they've got some people who pop up who you might not expect. I think, um, and big crabs and stuff. Okay, sure, sure, sure. Do you like big crabs? Mm, maybe. Yeah, delicious I like seafood. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, so. yeah. And the seafood diet. Go on. The seafood diet, Mason. I'm not on any kind of diet. Are you on the seafood diet? Can you play the um, the the latest theme song? Yes. Okay, let's do it. That was a short. What we're reading, don't you think? Classic one oh God, your loud phone is back. See, on previous phone, I yeah. had to put the volume all the way up. Now? Now it's Is that as loud as it goes? That's as loud as it goes. Oh my God. Yeah. should throw that away. I'm not going to. It's a nice phone. Mason, if you do want to reach the show, all you have to do is hashtag WeeklyPlanetPod on Twitter. So true. Or WeeklyPlanetPod at gmail.com. Or if you're me or Mason, we can just talk to each other and then we will reach the show. Oh, that's very true, isn't it? What do you have this week in terms of letters? And if you do not have one in front of you right now, I will do one. This is from Jack. Just yeah. says, sick on a plane. <laughs> Dear James and Meso, I got sick on a plane going to Florida from Washington. It hurts to swallow and I get headaches. Can I be the official sick kid on planes of the podcast? Absolutely. Yes, that's right. We're sorry you got sick on a plane. Yeah. That's not a good place to be Do you be think sick. it was related? Do you think it was air sickness or do you think it was? It's sore throat. You, I don't yeah. think that's an air sickness. Maybe that's an uh, altitude thing. I don't think so, man. Okay. It'd be more ears than okay. throat. I think they have gastro. Maybe they have. Well, that's not throat either. What's happening? What are you talking about? I don't know, man. It'd be like a COVID or like a. Like I a, know. Like a. Um, what is it called? The tonsillitis potentially. Might be tonsillitis, yeah. yeah. Anyway, this one's from Metal Eugeno, hashtag Weekly Planet Pod. If you can eliminate one genre between prequels or spin-offs, which would you pick? Prequels. Really? It's rarely a good prequel, right? I mean, we just did three-hour Hunger Games That's prequel. That's true. And that you didn't love fine. it. Mm. Um, but what about spin-offs? What spin-offs are you loving? Well, Monarch Legacy of Monsters, obviously. You haven't watched it yet. No, I haven't watched it yet. That's true. I'm going to write best Spin off movies, and I'm going to do best prequel movies. Okay. So we've got. You never loved prequels. No, I know, but I think there are some one. Some one. (laughs) Indiana Jones? I don't think that counts. Why not? Because it's not. Yes, it is. It's not. They're not like, oh, this is actually. This is the prequel. This is the origin of how we got all the stuff. X Men First Class. Pretty good. Bumblebee, maybe. Yeah. Prey? Not a prequel. Doesn't count as a prequel. No, Prey doesn't count as a prequel because it's an, it's just an event that happened prior to the original Predator. Fine. The King's Man, uh, the Fast and Furious movies that are set before Tokyo Drift. <laughs> Great point. Well, that's torpedoed my entire. Some argument, of the hasn't Planet it? of the Apes, and in terms of spin-offs, well, uh, well, Rogue One. This is also a prequel. Deadpool, Creed, mm. U.S. Marshals, Mason. There's some good ones here. Minions, Fantastic. Did you Beasts. say Creed? Yeah, it's not a prequel. No, it's these are spin. No. No, this is spin off. Oh, this, okay, right. this is 40. That's a great spin off, actually. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah, all right. Their prequel is fine. Yeah. Fine. <laughs> right. Fine. I'm not Mason. saying there aren't good prequels. Yeah, I'm yeah. saying that I, th- I think as a. I think you, you've got more options with spin offs as well. Because prequel yeah. that's like, well, he better get the thing that he has. Exactly. And with spin offs, you that's can be right. like, who cares? Yeah. Whatever. Who cares? It, it is 40. Yeah. You know? <laughs> that's right. What else you got, Mason? I'm going to find something. Don't no. even worry about uh, it. Why are you doing that? Okay. Uh, this is from Red Lion Flames who says, hashtag Weekly Planet Pod. I'm trying to find a funny voicemail message. Then I thought, why not ask the Weekly Planet to make one for me? No swearing, please. Hashtag Weekly Planet Pod. Just, just wing it. Grab that spaghetti covered gem. Okay, this is from Red Lion Flames. So we don't know. Don't know their names? Name. Okay, so whoever calls them, we're yeah. going to reveal their, their, their internet but handle. Do we want to do that? Yeah. Or do we wanna, okay, let's go. Hey, hey, dudes. Hey. Hey, everybody. It's two of us here. Yeah, that's right. Mm. If you you were looking for red line flames, mm-hmm. they're not here. No. They're off gallivanting probably. Yeah, and that might be your fault. That's right. If you'd like to leave a message, that is an option or you can hang up right now. Yeah, I mean most people hang up. Also, we're from the Weekly Planet podcast. That's right. Get a plug in there. Get a plug in there. That's great. Yeah. yeah. Do you think that'll work? I think so. Okay. Beep. You don't have to add the beef. No, no. No. Is this all in it? I think this is all in. Okay, yeah. great. Yeah, okay, great. Yeah. Beep. 
Uh, if you've gotten all the way to the end, Redline Flames will give you a cash prize <laughs> if you've made it all the way to the end of this voicemail. Thank you. Beep. That was the final beep. It was perfect. Thank you. All right, what do you got in terms of letters? I'm going to find one. Wow. And this is an email from Tim. Tim. Who says, my dogs love the podcast. Wow. Tim says, I've thought about sending this email for years, but since I'm from Albuquerque, New Mexico, episode 505 to? seemed like the perfect episode to try to get a letter read. Is this episode 505? Yes. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, then you're in luck, Tim T. Albuquerque's area code is 505, a thing we're very proud of. Can that be true? That they're, they're proud of it. Yep. Doesn't seem true. No, that seems, seems like seems a lie. Seems a ridiculous thing seems to be rid- proud of. <laughs> seems ridiculous. Be more proud of um, being a reference uh, that Bugs Bunny always makes. Yeah, Albuquerque. Albuquerque. Yeah. yeah. Uh, every morning I get up to take my dogs on a three-mile walk. I listen to podcasts while I do and usually start the podcast before I put my headphones in. The dogs don't always get up from their resting spots with as much excitement as, as they do when they hear James and Meso, which leads me to the only logical conclusion. My dogs love the podcast as much as I do. That makes a lot of sense. And it's also interesting because three miles is equivalent to 4.8 kilometres. Did you just do that off the top of your head? Did I do it off the top of my head just yes. now? Yep. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Why were you typing on your keyboard? Typing? Yep. On this computer? Correct, yes. Money. <laughs> Doing personal finance. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, that's actually very important. That's so. what I do. That's so, great. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah that's what yeah. I do when you read emails. Oh, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Tim says, thank you for all the years of laughs, thoughts, and quotes that don't make sense out of context or sound as good without an Australian accent. All right. Keep on doing your thing, boys. That's Tim from Albuquerque, New Mexico. P.S. You can settle a regional dispute by saying that New Mexico's green chile is better than Colorado's. Well, of course it is. Easy done. Easy done. Happy to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody knows that. Nobody also, like, aside, jokes aside. Yeah. I've never heard of a Colorado chili. Yeah, what are we talking about? Yeah. Maybe it's chili because it's a bit bloody cold. <laughs> More like Colorado. <laughs> I had a pen pal in Colorado when I was in primary school. I stopped writing to him. Don't know what happened to him. <laughs> okay. Maybe we should write him now. Write him right now. All right. He's well, doing I don't know his Folks, name. What's his it. name? You don't know his name. No, not his full name or huh. address. His name was Brandon. Brandon from Colorado. Yeah. So if you're oh, yeah. Brandon from Colorado yeah. and you had a pen pal in 1993, uh-huh. then um, don't expect much. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. <laughs> From me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, should we move it along? Well, you're branding yourself as a real bad friend there. I don't give a shit. Wow. If you if you told me he was dead, I'd be like, whatever. Wow. That ship has sailed. I sure. Who, who do you think? <laughs> do you think you stopped writing first? Yeah. No, it was me. Wow. Yeah. But that's not, it's not about that. What it is about is wrapping up the show as best so we can. True. That's right. Yeah. What do we uh, got? Folks, uh, thank you very much for listening to the show. We absolutely appreciate it. Thank you for telling your friends about the podcast. I hope he's okay, Brandon, wherever you are. I hope that also. <laughs> Just to clarify. I hope that also, despite your cavalier attitude towards Brandon from Colorado. <laughs> if you know Brandon from Colorado, yeah, what yeah. do you email in? Tell Let me. Yeah, Weeklyplanetpod yeah. at gmail.com. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. Uh, well, thank you also for leaving a five-star review on your podcast catcher of choice. You can do it in app most of the time. Let me just close all my financing operations and I'll do that for you right now, Mason. This is from Kerplunk who says, very few, if any, side effects detected from mass consumption. If you're right, you might live out your life with a deficit of, I reckon, do yourself a huge favor and get a, get it all over at once by listening to these wonderful guys. That's and right. this one from RJ Reviews Podcast says, this podcast is good. I've been listening to this podcast since the beginning. It's a good podcast, maybe even a great one, but probably just a good one. Five stars. I'll Whoa. take that. Probably just a good podcast. I'll say that. Any oh, day of the put week. Put that on our coat, coat of arms. Tombstone. Well, the coat of arms is on the tombstone. That is true. Actually, our joint it? tombstone. <laughs> Probably they did just a good podcast. <laughs> Question mark? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Uh, folks, if you want to get into contact with us, you can go to weeklyplanetpod at gmail.com, as we mentioned, uh, or you can go to the Planet Broadcasting Great Mates Facebook group. You can go to the Weekly Planet podcast subreddit and Discord for some fun, uh, good time, civil chats about podcasts and all things pop culture. Oh, there's so many good things Just going get out there. there. Have a good, good time chat. Thank you to uh, Sarabi and Maisie and Fidel for moderating those forums and oh my doing God. TikToks and Clips channels and all sorts ah, of stuff. They're all out there. Incredible. Uh, if you want to follow some people on the socials, first of all, our friend Rob Collings, who edits this podcast and uh, will keep you up to date mm-hmm, on all mm-hmm. things Weekly Planet. Follow him at Raw Collings at The Weekly Planet. Uh, you can follow me, Wikipedia Brown, on Twitter and Nick Maso on Instagram. James is Mr. Sunday Movies everywhere. everywhere. You want to support the show, you can go to patreon.com slash Mr. Sunday Movies. Chuck in a buck on a man you would not miss. Or you can go to bigsandwich.co, nine US dollars per month bonus podcast, movie commentaries, early videos, video game, let's plays, all other of stuff. That. All so, so much content. Next week, maybe Napoleon and new Doctor Who. Oh, yeah. Maybe Traditionally, Japan. as we meant, we, yes. we talked about this before we did the podcast. Traditionally, we did, we would do The Hunger Games and Doctor Who was one episode. Yep. 
Uh, but didn't uh, line up this year. Didn't line up, and too bad. Yep. But yeah, there's a new season of Doctor Who coming out, or a, is the special three specials or something. 40th anniversary yeah, special, yeah. I think something like that. So um, 40th, 60th, yeah, hundred, hundreds, ten million, ten million. Well, he's a time traveler. He's very old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a deliberate reference and not me messing everything up. <laughs> God. Uh, what else? Uh, thank you to the Brute and the Basilisk and Rackham for all our musical themes. Uh, T-shirts are at tpublic.com. Search for the Weekly Planet. You'll That's get right. one. You yeah, can get you, one if you want. You get one. Get one. Yeah, you get free. it. <laughs> you think? Yeah, probably. If you hack the site. Yeah, sure. it's fine. Yeah. yeah, do that. They recommend it. They do. They love it. Uh, that's the whole show. All right. Grab that, Jimmy, guys. We'll see you next week. Goodbye. Goodbye. Yeah. And goodbye from Ricardo Montalban. <laughs> I went upstairs and I was carrying, I don't know, about eight Oreos in a you know, stack. I'd hand him his weapon. I'd say, Peter, safety's off. And he wouldn't take the pistol. And he says, Robo wants an Oreo. And I looked at him and go, no, it's just you and I, Peter. Robo doesn't get an Oreo. If Peter wants an Oreo, Peter can have an Oreo. And he clip-clops in the suit over to the edge of the railing, and Peter starts bellowing, Robo wants an Oreo. And when the steel mill just echoes, Randy has Oreos, or Robo wants an Oreo. And Steve Lim over the radio goes, um, Randy, do you have Oreos? So I stuffed that whole stack in my mouth and then crunched them and let them fall down three stories onto everybody below me. And I, Not anymore. And Robo got upset. I haven't got a damn clue about Randy Moore and his fucking Oreos.